this class. So we had stopped at Young's Modulus. Actually, my Zoom wasn't working, so I was trying to join. That's why it took a time. I hope you were informed. Uh, see, so we had stopped at Young's Modulus. We didn't practice any questions. So what was what were all the topics that we have done? Initially, we had started with the deformities. That deformities were present. Deformations came into action because of the deforming force. Now, what all type of deformations were there? Change in shape, change in length, all right, and change in volume. These were the dimensions that were changing. Uh, now, see, then we had seen that if there is the, the type of force that is producing the change is per unit area is called stress. So, three types of stress also we had seen. Then we had seen, again, we had normal stress, which was known as longitudinal stress, volumetric stress, and tangential stress. All right. Then we had strain, which was the change in dimension by the original dimension. So ratio will be the same. You will cancel it. You will get it as you will get it unitless. All right. So normal, uh, this Young's modulus, uh, this strain is known as change in dimension by original dimension. Now, since we know there is not a single type of deformation only present in your system, there are multiple deformations present in your system. So what happens? Types of strain are also three. You have longitudinal strain, you have volumetric strain and again tangential strain. Now see, when we take the ratio of these two strain, that is stress is directly proportional to strain. So when you take their ratio, you get a quantity which is known as moduli of elasticity. All right. So among moduli of elasticity, one of them is Young's modulus. All right. Young's modulus, which is force upon area, longitudinal strain is delta L by L. So the final formula is Y is equal to F L divided by A delta L. F is the force, L is the original length, A is the area of cross section, delta L is the change in length. All right. So since we know strain is unitless, that is m uh, meter by meter will be cancelled. So force per unit area is only left. That is Pascal's or Newton meter square. All right. So questions we didn't practice. No? Okay. Write down this first question. This is consisting a composite wire. And this last word here is consisting. So I'm keeping it like this. Write it down.
This is the figure copper and here is his steel. Yes, answers for this course you have to calculate. Just one thing I'll tell you, this is the length. So when you will add the elongation, that is the elongation of copper and elongation of steel, you will get around 0 0.77, uh, 0 0.7 millimeter according to the question. 0 0.7 millimeter according to the question. So you can use this statement and uh, further answer. See, use the statement of Young's modulus for copper. That will be Force upon area, length of copper, change in length of copper. Young's modulus of steel will be force, length of steel, area, change in length of steel. This you can use. Now try it. Okay, uh, so the ratio of the Young's modulus for copper and Young's modulus of steel, this will be F, length of copper area, change in length of copper into, this will be the denominator. So F into length of steel area and change in length of steel. So force will cancel force area, will cancel area. So this ratio will be 1.1 into 10 to the power 11. 2 into 10 to the power 11 is equal to 2.2 into delta LS divided by. Now change in length of copper, how can we write? See, you can write from here change in length of steel. What will it be equal to? 0 0.7 minus 
change in length of copper. But we are writing length of copper itself. No? So let's write steel here and copper here. So from here, copper will be 0 0.7 minus change in length till S. Same thing I'm writing. So that we have the same variable. That's why I'm writing this. 0 0.7 into 10 to the power minus 3 minus delta LS into 1.6. So, from here, the unknown variable is delta L. S, this only you had to calculate delta L S value. See, how did we, we put this? You wanted, you were asking about this statement. I'll tell you. Wait. You have delta L S plus delta L C U is equal to 0 0.7 millimeters. So, I've converted milli, that is 10 to the power minus 3 meters. From here, delta LCU is equal to 0 0.7 into 10 to the power minus 3 minus delta LS. This I have substituted instead of delta LC. Because if you look at this equation, both of them if I'll put, then I'll not be able to solve it. Using one only equation, I cannot solve two variables. So I converted this only into a single variable. That is delta LS. Now for area. For the area, what you have to do? For the area, this is pi r square. Diameter is 3 millimeters. So, radius will be 3 by 2 millimeters, which is 1.5 millimeters. All right? So, radius is 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 meters. Now you just have to substitute this value into force delta ls. Now you just you are, if, if you have the value of delta ls, you will get the value of force also. Write it down first. Let me know what are your calculations.
when a weight w is hung from one end of wire of length l length in, of the wire increases by l if some wire is passed over a pulley and weights w each are hung at the two ends what will be the total elongation of the wire basically this is saying that this is a rod force is w weight that is act acting change in length is l so young's modulus is f l a l so when you put the value of force as weight this is w l a into l all right now see the, then the second part is saying the pulley is present. This is having W weight. This is having W weight. Here the length is L by 2. Here the length is L by 2. So see, Young's modulus will be weight into length by 2 area into delta l now both the both the young's modulus are same this is also same this is also same so we can equate both these equations so what we will get w l a l is equal to w capital l to a delta l so area area will be cancelled w l w l will be cancelled so delta l is equal to length by 2 it means it will be elongated by L by 2 from here, L by 2 from here. But see, L by 2 is not the answer. This is saying total elongation of the wire. Total elongation of the wire means this also and this also. This is L by 2, this is L by 2. So total <clears throat> elongation will be L by 2 plus L by 2 is equal to uh, which is 2L by 2 is equal to L. Alright. So, the total elongation will again be L itself. Write it down.
okay then now the last type of modulus which is bulk modulus so young's no one more the, the first one we have done young's modulus this is bulk modulus and one more that is shear modulus so due to length we were getting uh, the young's modulus strain was also longitudinal strain the stress was also longitudinal stress so here the change is present in volume so it is defined as the ratio of volumetric stress to the volumetric strain so bulk modulus the definition of bulk modulus is the type of stress that will be involved will be volumetric stress by volume metric strain so this is the change in volume that will be there all the forces will be acting from different different directions now the final formula that we get is for bulk modulus see volumetric strain when we talk about volumetric strain this is equal to delta v by v pressure is equal to p so bulk modulus is equal to minus p v by delta v this is the negative sign. This negative sign, can you see in the formula? See, why pressure is P? That is the volumetric stress. That is pressure by volume. We have pressure uh, is equal to force per unit area. This is force per unit area. So, this negative sign is volume is decreasing this is because the volume is decreasing and here the si unit will again be pascals okay one more thing that we have is known as compressibility so compressibility of a material is a measure of how easily the material can be compressed more the value of bulk modulus, less it is easier to compress. It becomes more difficult. So we represent it through the symbol K. And the formula is very simple. Just reciprocate bulk modulus. Just reciprocate bulk modulus. K is compressibility. B is the bulk modulus. And SI unit is Pascal's inverse. All right, this is bulk modulus. This is compressibility. And SI unit will be Pascal's inverse. So more is the value of bulk modulus. You get lesser value of compressibility. Yeah. Means it becomes difficult to compress these. And bulk modulus decreases. So compressibility increases. All right, write down this second one.
See, this says that average depth of Indian Ocean is 3000 meters. Calculate fractional compression delta V by V of water at bottom of ocean. So, given bulk modulus of water is 2.2 into 10 to the power 9 Newton per meter square. So, this suppose you are given water, which is 3000 meter. This is what it is saying. One formula is there class for pressure that we'll do in the next lesson. Pressure is equal to H. That is height into density into G. This we'll do. This you have a derivation also. The derivation also properly we'll do. P is equal to H rho G. So B is equal to minus B V by delta V. So delta V by V is equal to H rho G divided by B. So from here, we can find out the value. What is height? Height is given. 3000. Density of water, always remember this is 1000 kg per meter cube. 1000 kg per meter cube and 1 gram per centimeter cube. So, this is an SI unit, this is in CGS unit. So, density is 1000. G is 10 and B is 2.2 into 10 to the power 9. So calculate it and check it. What is the value coming? This, this was just something new which you had to remember. Pressure. Write it down.
Uh, yes, class, you can take a break now and then you can directly join in your thermal units class. Link, I think link has not been shared, no? I'll share the link. You can leave and join that ID. Yes. 